And good day, everyone. I'm Andrea Mitchell in Washington with the fallout from that unprecedented move by Republican, a Republican supermajority of state lawmakers in Tennessee, expelling those two 27-year-old black Democrats for taking part in the gun safety protest, but not the third lawmaker who joined them, a white woman. Why do you feel like there was a difference in the outcome between you and your colleague? You want, I will answer your question. It might have to do with the color of our skin. One of the lawmakers who was expelled, Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones, joining me now. Uh, Justin, thank you very much. I, I want to begin by getting your reaction now to what happened last night. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yesterday was a very grave day for democracy and a very dangerous precedent was set, not just for Tennessee, but for the nation, that a, a predominantly white Republican supermajority expelled the two youngest black lawmakers in Tennessee because we stood with our constituents demanding an end um, to this proliferation of, of guns, of weapons of war on our streets. And rather than pass common sense gun laws a week after a mass shooting um, hit here in Nashville, they, they passed the resolutions to expel us from the legislature which has only been done three times in the Tennessee House history. And it was done not in any case for this kind of violation of the floor rules. Uh, in one case, I believe it was because of a, of, a, of a sex allegation that had been proved against the lawmaker. Uh, this goes all the way back to the Civil War. That's correct. You know... Uh, That's correct. There's it, only been all... three... Oh, sorry. The, the th no, you go ahead. <laughs> The three expulsions that I'm sorry, um, and I'm just, it's, it's been exhausting because, um, you know, we, we, we didn't know what to expect this weekend, so I'm not offering up a lot of sleep, but there's only been three expulsions, as I said, in Tennessee history. One in 1866 for lawmakers who refused to ratify the 14th Amendment. Um, one in 1980 for a lawmaker who accepted a $1,000 bribe for his vote and was caught on, on a wire. And one in 2016 for a lawmaker who had 22 counts of sexual harassment. So what they did, said was that our action of standing in solidarity, of protesting for common sense gun laws with our constituents after being silenced on the House floor multiple times by Speaker Cameron Sexton, they're saying that our action is equivalent to those uh, very egregious, unethical, unlawful act, um, actions, and they're putting our action of nonviolent protest, um, again, with these young people who are, at, who are at the Capitol, thousands of them asking us to act, they're saying that our action is equivalent to those actions that they've that, that set the precedent for expulsion before in Tennessee. And there's such, there's such a history of young people like John Lewis, the Student Nonviolent uh, Coordinating Committee, college students, graduate students, high school students being active in these protests in the civil rights movement that I remember, uh, and now uh, the gun protests, um, and you were standing with the students. You have support in your district, and you can now be reappointed. But will the Republican supermajority vote to seat you? Hmm. That's the question. I mean, that is something that we don't know. Cameron Sexton, as we saw last night, the Speaker of the House, is not a fan of democracy. Um, and so the next step is up to him. You know, we, we know that the voters um, right now, 78,000 people in my district, 78,000 people in Representative Pearson's district, they're without representation. And these are some of the most diverse districts in Tennessee. And, they're, and they've been silenced. And so that's, that's the crime that's happening, is that these young people were silenced for standing and calling for common sense gun laws after a mass shooting. They're not being heard. And now our districts are being silenced. I mean, this is this is attacking democracy on so many different levels, and then to refuse to seat us after expelling us. Um, I mean, this, this is saying that Tennessee is is on the border or is already um, faced with authoritarianism. Um, I want to play something that really touched me last night uh, on Stephanie Rule's show. Uh, from so our viewers who may not have seen it can see what happened when Republican National Committee Chair, former Republican National Committee Chair Michael Steele, former Lieutenant Governor, he was talking to you last night on the 11th hour. You represent um, a future that America has been leaning towards for a long time. Your generation will change this country. Your generation will mark this moment and every last one of those bastards who voted you out will rue that moment. Whether it's in Tennessee, whether it's anywhere else in the country, your generation has an opportunity to seed something different. I was really moved by the way he was encouraging you. I don't think you, you and the passion that you and the other Justin feel need the encouragement, but the passion and the commitment that you've been showing 
in the face of so much harassment, talk to me about the working conditions about from your Republican colleagues, some of the harassment you've had to deal with all along. Definitely. And, and that moment last night was touching for me. And, and it was actually when I was at my office, you know, starting to pack up my things. I, I did that on Zoom from my office because they told me I had to leave immediately and get my stuff and shut off my email, my access to the building. And so um, that's the toxic work environment that is the Tennessee legislature to be 27 years old, to be a black lawmaker. Um, from the day I walked in in January, I was made to feel unwelcome, um, not able to talk on committees, um, had comments, um, colleagues make snide remarks um, on elevators in committee. Um, belittling remarks, patronizing remarks. I mean, it, there's so many micro and macro aggressions working in the Tennessee Capitol. I think the nation, what well, they saw yesterday, they, a lot of people were shocked. But for us in Tennessee, that's just another day at the Tennessee legislature. The disdain, the arrogance, the hubris that the, the nation saw and was shocked about um, is how they always act. And so it is a culture that is being perpetuated by House Speaker Cameron Sexton um, that, that is not in line with with our vision, which is a multiracial democracy. And, and I hope that, you know, the young people who are there saw that because I think it needs to change. And I, I do believe that young people are going to transform this state again. They did it before in the 1960s. Tennessee was ground zero for, for a lot of the civil rights movement in Nashville, sit-ins and freedom rides. And I think it's our time again to lead the nation um, and, 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 and revive this, this mass movement um, calling for a generational change, especially when it comes to these guns and, and, and easy access to weapons of war. I'm on our streets that are that are killing our babies as we saw it come in elementary school and we'll never forget what happened of course on april 4th uh, 1968 to dr king uh well i cannot uh, i cannot match michael Steele's eloquence in his encouragement to you but i think the nation is feeling it today and i'm really grateful to you for for coming on with us thank you thank you all so much